Whenever I'm setting up a new Mac or just trying to enhance the user experience on an existing device, there's a few settings that I look into in order to make Mac OS make sense. The very first one is very important and that is because without your trackpad, your Mac is basically useless and if you don't have an external mouse, you need to make this work for you. The first setting that I do here is go into system settings and you can see I can tap my trackpad right here but it's not doing anything thing and I don't know why Apple doesn't enable this by default on a new device so go into settings right here I just have to force click or actually press in the trackpad and go into the trackpad settings and go to where it says tap to click and tap with one finger and if I enable this now on my trackpad I can just simply tap without having to press and it will register the click. Now on my other devices that I have besides the Mac that runs Mac OS, some other devices run Windows or for example on the iPhone when I'm scrolling pages or going to different websites and that just scrolling this is the natural scrolling that I'm used to so when I drag the screen up everything goes up when I drag it down everything comes down but on Mac OS you can see here when I go up the screen goes down when I go down the page or the contents that I'm looking at actually do the counter opposite so the next setting I go to is scroll and zoom under the trackpad and turn on natural scrolling. Now, there are some Mac users that like it the other way, but for me, this makes sense because when I go up, the contents that I'm looking at go up. When I go down, they go down. And that is the same function that my iPhone does here. When I go up, you know, it's going up. When I go down, it goes down. As a user that goes back and forth between the iPhone, between the iPad, Windows and Mac, this is more natural and feels the same throughout the different devices that I use. Another important setting I usually change while in this trackpad section, you can see how slow the cursor is. So I usually come and take it all the way to the third point or third from last and this way it feels faster. And going into the settings and the accessibility section right here, if I go down a little bit, there's the pointer control and under this section, I like to increase the double click speed because I want to be fast on the go and at the same time here when I go to trackpad option you can see I have the use trackpad for scrolling which is a must for me and I can use and be able to change the scroll speed right here and of course at the same time I use use trackpad for dragging and I turn this on. Some people prefer the three finger options where you go on the top of any window and you move your three fingers to drag. But an option that works for me in this section is without drag lock. And when I double click like this and hold with one finger, you can see I'm able to drag and drop the window in whichever section I want. Most of these trackpad settings that I've just showed, you only be able to access after setting up your Mac, which takes us to the next thing that you'll see once your Mac is all set up, and that is the desktop. Over a certain period of time, you'll be able to see different folders and different files. Some are videos, some are screen recordings, others are screenshots, and in order to tidy this up, I really like to use stacks. So right click on my trackpad and then go to where it says use stacks. And you can see the system automatically groups these two movies. So all the movies I've done, if I want to expand them, I just click there and it expands. And then if I want to see the different screenshots that I use on different projects, you can see them right there. And these are the folders right here. Most Mac OS users don't even want to show the stacks right here so if you want to hide it and have a cleaner look on your device what you can do is go to your different applications and open up other and you see terminal and in terminal you can paste this command that I will leave in the description of this video default right dot com apple finder and then once you copy the whole thing just click enter and you can see on our desktop everything has disappeared and don't worry your files are not deleted you can also always be able to access them by going into finder and if you go to where it says desktop right here you can see the different files that we hid and if you want to change or be able to show back your applications you can easily go back to terminal and then 
paste the same command but then you want to remove this text that says false and put the word or replace it with the word true and click enter and now you can see our desktop icons have shown up but for most Mac users, it seems to be a Mac OS and an aesthetic thing because the screensavers and wallpapers are pretty good on Mac OS and most people don't like to have this on the desktop. Now on the Mac, just like on the iPhone, it's very possible that you're going to be able to consume different content such as music or watch different Apple TV shows. So the next setting I change in my different Apple applications, for example, Apple Music is go to the settings right here and then go to playback and under playback, I like to enable lossless audio. This is a higher audio quality that preserves every detail of the original track and turning this on of course will consume significant data and at the same time if you watch different shows in the apple tv app you can go into the settings as well right here and go to where it says playback and under this section you have hdmi pass through which now you can use and use hdmi preferred pass through with support for dolby atmos and dolby audio formats which will give you a richer experience and enhanced audio when you are playing shows also watching different things in the Apple TV app. With the latest Mac OS updates, you can see we have support for widgets and that's the other thing that I usually like to do. So on my window section right here or the notification tab window, I really like to put the calendar on top and at the same time, anytime I want to glance at the date, I usually just look at it right there or I can always look at it on top and I like to put a big widget that shows the current trending news or the top stories and if I want to add something on my desktop one of the first or main widgets that I usually add is this one that shows the batteries and this one for example shows the batteries of my MacBook and for example if I was to turn on my external mouse like this you can see it shows up and at the same time if I was to turn on my Apple magic keyboard right here and press any button just give it a moment and you can see it shows up right here and it gives me the ability to even add other devices so one more such as airpods and then that way i'll be able to see my batteries on my different devices i've used different operating systems such as windows and mac os and i gotta say when it comes to the wallpapers and screen savers for mac os like i mentioned before here the attention to detail is actually very much in depth and so the next setting that's very very much changeable is the wallpaper and one such amazing wallpaper is this one that you can see this is a Macintosh wallpaper every time you select it there's a different animation and with each Mac OS release you can see we have different versions that have dynamic wallpapers and it has dark and light mode and to correspond to the wallpapers I usually select an appropriate screensaver as well and then I make sure my time settings are correct so so that the screen won't shut off before the screensaver shows up and I'll give you a small preview of how such a screensaver looks. You can see this one changes and writes important information throughout the history of Mac OS. The next thing I usually customize on my Mac is Finder and right here by going into the Finder settings, Finder is like your file manager when it comes to Mac OS. So by going into the settings, I'm able to customize the different icons I need to show on the sidebar. So for example, hard disk i don't need that to show up at the same time i don't need the music you can uncheck as many items as you want and then just leave the ones that are practical for you and at the same time if you were to go into different files or different documents and you want to add a quick link into your sidebar to be able to access a specific folder or a section it's a matter of just dragging and dropping it there and you'll be able to access it right there finder also gives you the ability to create a new smart folder so if you go to file while your finder is in the background you can go file new smart folder and then you can choose different parameters and where you want it to search and that way it will be a smart folder that only does the specific task and uses the parameters you've set as the contents of that smart folder and then that way you can drag and drop the folder on your sidebar and it will be able to save you some time by default the mac os won't be showing your battery percentage so by going into the settings you can go to where it says 
control center and under this section you can show the battery percentage and then show the battery icon in the top menu bar and you can see it's now charged or if you want to hide the percentage you can hide it right there but for me it's more practical to see the percentage so that I know if I have enough charge before I head out. In the Wi-Fi and network setting this is something that I usually turn on it's rotate Wi-Fi address and this helps reduce tracking by changing your Wi-Fi address at various times and this basically tells you that tracking can happen when your address is always the same to other devices or people that are using the same network so by turning this on it leads to enhanced security and privacy overly for your different connections that you make online. Now in the general tab under the section that says airdrop and handoff I like to actually turn this option that says allow airdrop between this Mac and your iCloud devices on because this gives me the ability to use my iPhone as a webcam for my Mac which is a better camera and at the same time in the desktop and dock section I have the ability to use my iPhone and different widgets or from my iPhone as well that I have selected so I have the 14 Pro selected and I'm able to use the same widget and depending on the iPhone that I would have selected right here so 14 Pro if I go to the notifications tab I have the ability to allow notifications from my iPhone and then this way I can choose the different applications from my iPhone without actually having to touch it or use it that will be coming through my Mac and every time I get an iPhone notification it will be able to show up here and I can interact with it and reply to it without actually having to open my iPhone and this is all thanks to a feature that is called iPhone mirroring that you can see right here and it gives you the ability to interact and use different devices and applications so if I want to use my iPhone by going into the settings if I want to go to general you can see I'm able to do that without having to touch my iPhone which is here and it's locked so this is a very big feature that will help you stay productive at the same time not missing out on important notifications from your iPhone or using different applications on your iPhone to complete tasks on your Mac. Now under this section right here the touch ID and password I like to set up multiple fingerprints so I use this one as my main finger and then I've set it up twice just in case it has an error or sometimes I'm not always getting to read with the first attempt I can register the same finger multiple times and at the same time since I have the Apple watch you can see I can use the Apple watch to unlock my applications on the, the Mac as long as I've unlocked my Apple watch by authenticating with a passcode and then that way I'm able to seamlessly move from device to device and so basically those are just some of the few settings and things I try to change when I get a new Mac or when I try to improve the user experience overly on Mac OS. So let me know what other things you want to see or what you do typically for your device and um, leave the comments down below and if you like this video do leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.